The world must prepare for a potential coronavirus pandemic. And feel the impact of the fears about the coronavirus. Increasingly concerned about a rising number of cases. COVID-19 has made us familiar with the unseen costumes of the millennia, like the PPE kits and N95 masks that the doctors wore. But what do you think of this scary costume of the plague doctors of the 16th century? Welcome to History Facts, and today we will uncover the creepy history of the scary plague masks wore during one of the deadliest epidemics, the bubonic plague of Europe. In the 1650s, during the bubonic plague in Italy, the doctors who cared for the ill were often criticized for their unusual and sometimes terrifying costumes. It is believed that over a million people died in Italy and nearby countries during a decade. No one was safe. Something had to be done. So the Italians invented this creepy bird-like costume and sent their doctors out in this ridiculous costume. The Plague Doctor mask might be considered the world's first attempt to make a gas mask. As this pandemic spread in other neighboring countries, they also adopted this creepy attire. These Plague Doctors wore a black robe, gloves, as well as a mask with a long beak. These masks looked like ravens or other predatory birds. These masks resembled the death messengers of Egyptian mythology. In every funeral procession, the coffin was carried by a raven-like creature. The clothing itself served a considerably more important purpose than just being a bizarre costume. It wasn't even a costume. The design was based on sound medical grounds and was thought to protect plague doctors in multiple ways. According to experts, the plague doctor's famous attire was not invented until 1656. This is a long time after the Middle Ages, when the Black Death ravaged Europe. However, there is early evidence of a similar suit being worn in 1619, although this one was made from Moroccan goatskin and included with boots, a hat, gloves, and pants. In the mid-1600s, a German artist, Gerhard Altsenbach, created the first illustration of the Plague Doctor's costume along with a detailed description. He described how each part of this costume protected the plague doctors from getting infected. While the majority of the suit made sense as it completely covered the body with dense leather material, the beaked mask was something to be questioned. What was the point of completely hiding the doctor's face? The beak had a purpose. The mask was snug and the beak was about six inches long. The compartment in the front of the nose served as a chamber for aromatics. Before modern medicine, it was thought that the aromatics at the front of the mask would keep the user from breathing in what was known as miasma, or diseased air. It was loaded with sweet or strong-smelling plants that would block the miasma. Wormwood was used as the principal component which had a strong odor. The beak consisted of a vinegar-soaked sponge and the strong scent of vinegar helped inhibit so-called miasma. They also wore goggles with circular lenses. These goggles and mask were firmly tied to the doctor's head by a cowl and leather straps. Aside from the sweaty and terrifying look, the costume had air holes drilled into the beak, which was a major issue. This resulted in the death of several doctors who became infected with the plague. The exterior part of the costume was constructed of goat leather and was coated with wax. The doctor donned a shirt that was connected to their boots below. To symbolize their job, plague doctors wore a wide-brimmed leather hat along with the beaky plague mask. Not only that, these doctors utilized bamboo canes to point out problem areas and check patients without touching them. The canes were also used to keep people at bay, remove garments off plague sufferers without touching them, and measure a patient's pulse. Many people thought the costume was more of a gimmick than a result of medical research. Another engraver named Paulus Furst made a satirical version of the Plague Doctor costume similar to Altsenbach. The doctor was referred to as Dr. Beaky from Rome in this edition. 
Instead of praising the outfit and the doctor, it implied that the doctor did nothing except to scare people and collect money from the dead and dying. Not just that, but Paulus exaggerated the image. He added claw-like gloves and a bat-winged hourglass upon the cane carried by the doctor. According to medical historians, the Beak Doctor costume was invented in 1619 by Charles de Lorme, the royal physician to King Louis XIII of France, who embraced the notion of a full head-to-toe protective suits. These beaky plague masks were worn by doctors since 1619 till the end of 1725. These beaky costumes were also worn by plague doctors during the plague of 1656 in Italy that killed around 145,000 in Rome and 300,000 in Naples. This outfit frightened many since seeing it meant death was approaching. While attending to the plague patients, plague doctors wore these protective suits in compliance with their agreements. One of the most intriguing figures to emerge from the Middle Ages were the plague doctors. These were European doctors who specialized in treating plague victims. Governing authorities of the villages, towns, or cities recruited them as public servants to treat the plague patients as local doctors denied to treat them. The core responsibility of a plague doctor was to treat and cure plague victims as well as to bury the deceased. These beaky doctors had to record the number of victims in logbooks for public use and document patients' dying wishes. As they were the last to see the deceased, they were frequently asked to testify for the dead's wills. Sometimes, these plague doctors were asked to perform autopsies for research purposes to understand how the plague could be treated. Doctors didn't understand infections at the time. They thought the disease was spread by stale air. Any air with a foul odor was considered questionable. As a result, the physicians stuffed herbs and flowers inside the beaks of their masks. Sometimes, they used to burn the flowers and herbs before placing them in the beak. This would produce smoke and fill the mask for some time. They hoped that by doing so, the foul odors in the air would be removed before the doctors inhaled them and saved them from getting infected. The bacteria that causes plague occasionally spreads through the air, but these good-smelling plants couldn't save them. Many of these plague doctors were infected because of inhaling via the nasal holes in the mask. Many people believe that the sickness was spread by spirits or bad influences that disrupted the patient's emotions. The mask intended to both physically block the spirits from entering the doctor's body and to terrify and drive those demons out from their patients. Some plague doctors did take advantage of their patients' finances and fled with their final will and testament. Being in demand, these creepy plague doctors were idolized and even seized for ransom. Plague doctors were hired and paid by the governments to treat everyone, regardless of economic background. These creepy-looking doctors created their own treatments and tinctures, which they included with a price for richer patients. The doctor carried a long wooden stick with which they communicated with their patients. These doctors also used the wooden stick to fend off the most desperate and aggressive ones. Many people believe that the plague was a curse from God and asked these doctors to lash them with the wooden sticks for repentance. As a result, plague doctors turned to some questionable, hazardous, and debilitating remedies. Plague doctors were typically uneducated, therefore, they possessed less medical expertise than professional doctors who believed in faulty scientific doctrines. Treatments varied from the strange to the very horrifying at the time. These included the pus-filled tumors seen on the neck, armpits, and groin. All of these inhumane methods contributed to the spread of the virus. These attempts frequently expedited mortality and infection spread by causing chronic burn scars and blisters. Other remedies included having patients consume their urine or take medications made from eggshells and other weird ingredients. Patients would also be massaged with onion, garlic, butter, arsenic, or flower petal compounds, or even asked to rub animal parts on their bodies in an attempt to cure the sickness. 
As the patient's health deteriorated, they were coated with mercury and roasted in an oven for a period in an extreme attempt to treat the sickness. These creepy plague masks and those horrifying treatments are thankfully a thing of the past, but we still carry over those quarantining, burning of the infected, and experimenting mentalities with medicines.